It's finally happening. After three years of toiling away in the entertainment industry, I finally scored an interview for the most coveted of all entertainment jobs, the mailroom at Paradigm. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't some random assistant job. This is my dream job, where all the big wigs like David Geffen got their start. It doesn't matter that I only own one suit, or that I'm terrible at planning, time management, and remembering people's names. This job is going to rocket me to the top of the entertainment industry, and nothing is going to stand in my way. And by nothing, I mean everything. <laughs> I eagerly wait for the day of my interview, put on my one suit, grab my Northwestern leather resume binder, and nothing. <laughs> All right, this is the audience for it, I got it. <laughs> and head out the door. It's time to get my dream job. But 30 seconds after leaving my apartment, I realized that I made a critical mistake. I accidentally left my keys and my wallet inside my apartment and locked out. <laughs> I immediately start berating myself. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what have you done? Calm down, everything's going to be okay. Nothing will ever be okay again, your career is ruined. <laughs> I don't think you're being rational, perhaps you should just calm down and call the landlord. My inner voice of sanity makes a good point. I can just get the landlord to let me into my apartment and everything will be fine. There's no need for hysteria. Unfortunately, the landlord can't get there in time. Strike one. And Paradigm is too far away to walk. Strike two. And I can't take Uber because it's 2009 and Uber doesn't exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> my dream job is getting more and more out of reach. So I do what any reasonable human being would do. I call my mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, my mom operates under a small town mentality where there are no hard and fast rules and everyone's flexible. She doesn't think that this is a big deal at all. Oh, just get a cab, and when you get there, tell the driver you forgot your wall and give him the credit card number and he'll run that. I'm not convinced. I'm telling you, this is how things work. You should trust me. I'm instantly convinced. <laughs> so I order a cab and get a call a few minutes later that it's here. Problem solved. Problem is not solved. I go outside, and the cab is nowhere to be found. I call the cab company again, and they assure me that the driver is right around the corner and will be there in one minute. Sure enough, the cab arrives one minute later, and an irate cab driver, who clearly needs anchor management classes, immediately starts yelling, You shouldn't have called! I came within the original three-minute window! This is how cabs work! I can already tell this is going to be a fun ride. As I nervously sit there trying to formulate a plan, the driver starts telling me how lucky I am because he's an experienced driver who knows all the shortcuts. Red flag number one. <laughs> then he starts ranting about all these newfangled red light cameras they just installed in all the intersections in LA. Red flag number two. <laughs> then he rolls down the window and fucking warns the driver next to him about these cameras. <laughs> Three red flags is really just not Bobo. After what feels like an eternity, we finally arrive at Paradigm. I smoothly follow the plan that I have been repeatedly rehearsing in my head. I reach for my wallet, feign shock, and say, oh crap, I don't have my wallet on me, but you can just run this credit card number instead. The driver goes ballistic. What's wrong with you? Why would you do such a thing? As if this was all part of a master plan. Okay, well, it was. <laughs> then he insists that we go back to my apartment to get my wallet, but I tell him that this won't work because I'm also locked out of my apartment. You better pay her and call in the cops. Okay, Mom definitely didn't warn me about this. <laughs> Wait a minute, I realize. My landlord's office is only a few blocks away. The landlord can't come to me, but I can come to him. I'm saved. I call the landlord. Funny story. And give him a rundown of the situation, and politely ask if he can lend me 18 bucks to pay the cab driver. He cannot. <laughs> so much for my mom's small town values being universal. <laughs> but then, the driver has a moment of sanity and says that I should just call his cell phone so he can get my number and he'll get the money from me later. Hmm. OMG, this is an amazing 180. Everything's going to work out. I can still get my dream job. But when he sees my incoming area code, he doesn't like what he sees. <laughs> 856? You don't live in LA. No, I live in LA. This isn't an LA number. <laughs> I assure you, I live in the apartment where you pick me up. It's just an old cell phone number. He still doesn't believe me. Give me your cell phone. Seriously? He wants collateral? Do I have a choice in the matter? I don't think I have a choice. I hand over my Blackberry Pro, and even though it's 2009. Yeah, remember those phones? So I hand over my Blackberry Pro, and even though it's 2009, this is a phone that full on connects to the internet, he decides it isn't valuable enough for him. Okay, give me your watch. I'm not even wearing a watch. Then he points to my Northwestern resume binder. Okay, give me that. 
Dude, no disrespect, but you really don't seem like Northwestern resume binder material. <laughs> he looks over all my stuff and decides that it isn't good enough, so he returns everything, locks me in the car, and steps out. I'm literally trapped. <laughs> to make matters worse, it's after 4 p.m., and I missed a call from Paradigm because he held my phone just long enough to mess everything up. <laughs> so I call Paradigm and explain that I'm technically here for my 4 p.m. interview with Denise, but I ran to a little snafu, and now the cab driver outside won't let me leave. <laughs> Not knowing what else to do, the receptionist transfers me directly to Denise. Oh. Side note, if you ever need to get through to an agency, just tell them you're trapped in a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I explain the situation to Denise, and she's horrified on my behalf. Oh my god, she says. Hang tight, let me go get some petty cash. My involuntary escaper was about to end. Operation Dream Job is back on track. A few minutes later, a nice blonde lady knocks on the cat window. Are you Ben? <laughs> yes. I'm Denise. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. This is the weirdest start to an interview I've ever had. <laughs> now, Denise owes the cab driver $18, but he says it's now $22 because he kept the meter running while he was imprisoning me against my will. <laughs> I'm pretty sure neither of these things is legal. <laughs> But Denise doesn't have $22, she only has a 20. So the driver angrily takes the 20 and lets me out of the cab. Never call this cab company again. <laughs> As if I would have wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Denise and I walk away, and a feeling of relief comes over me. Sure, I'm late to my interview, I got held hostage in a cab, and HR had to bail me out. But I successfully made it to my dream job. I survived. Were you the passenger of this car? I turn around and come face to face with a cop. Fuck. Yeah. She probably doesn't believe my mom's small town values either. Yes, I was the passenger of the cab. Why didn't you pay the entire fare? <laughs> Denise interjects. Because he left the meter running and held him hostage. The cop glares at Denise. Ma'am, we need to hear both sides of the story. <laughs> so, I don't really have anything else to do, so I tell the cop what happened, and he is not in the least abused. Mm -hmm. How old are you, sir? 26. This isn't a good way to start your job interview. <laughs> <laughs> I now officially have a negative character witness at my job interview. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, something clicks for Denise. Wait a second. If you didn't have any money, how are you planning on getting back home? I now officially have two negative character witnesses <laughs> at my job interview. I hadn't thought that far ahead, I shouted in frustration, <laughs> even though. And I confirmed that Denise was right, and that's why we only had $20 and not $22. And the cop asked the driver if this is true, and the driver immediately changes his tune and gives us back the extra $2. <laughs> I can't believe this. We're getting change from a hostage taker. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Uh -huh. Not knowing what else to do, I thank the driver for politely returning my ransom money <laughs> and triumphantly walk inside Paradigm with Denise. Paradigm has that dinky little office full of crushed souls and slave wages, but to me, it's paradise. <laughs> the rows of assistants, the hustle and bustle of phone calls, the sense that at any moment someone could buy my script and pluck me out of obscurity. <laughs> this isn't just my dream job, this is my dream life. I fill out all the HR paperwork and casually bring up the elephant in the room to Denise. I hope this whole thing doesn't ruin my interview. She laughs. Don't worry, it's kind of comical. I never heard from Paradigm again. <laughs> <laughs>